I want to convince you that students should be encouraged to play mobile games. Yep, yeah, I'm a teacher and I think they should play mobile games. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some better mobile games and some worse mobile games, but I want you to consider this. Socrates, 400 BC, he said, the young people of today, they've got no respect. He said it in Greek, okay? He said, they've got no respect. They would rather chatter than do exercise. Oh, doesn't that sound like the parents of today complaining about students on social media? Pressing buttons, chattering away. Ah, oh, there is a possibility that you'll be pressing buttons and you'll get run over by a car because you're not concentrating. So yes, there are dangers. And there will always be those outliers where somebody died due to playing a mobile game because they walked across the road. But I'm talking for most people. When it's one in a million chance, then yeah, you have to take those dangers. Don't sweat the small stuff. But if you try to stop mobile games entirely, they'll go underground. Students will be doing it late at night, underneath the bedclothes. And that's the worst thing. So when an older generation hounds something, then it becomes worse. Because if you're looking at your screen underneath the bedclothes, late at night, two o'clock in the morning, so your parents won't be awake to tell you off, then what happens is you don't sleep very well. And in my lessons, you won't be awake. And that really annoys me when I'm trying to teach them physics and maths and difficult stuff. So yeah, they should be encouraged to play their mobile games, but there should be give and take, negotiation, so that they play these mobile games before school, giving them the adrenaline, waking them up. And then when it gets to nine, 10 o'clock, they'll be tired because they had the adrenaline shot early. So negotiate with them, say to them, hey, I want you to play these games. In fact, I'm going to buy you this game that Mr. Science Stevens recommended. Civ Rev 2. This particular game I play. Why? Because it shows a whole range of education whilst playing it. You have to learn. Now, all mobile games and video games, you have to learn how to be good at them. But this game is a strategy game. So you have to learn patience, learn to plan ahead, learn to find out about things. When you start on the map, everything's greyed out. And so you have to move and gamble that you'll go somewhere that's better than where you are now. And this is a good thing to educate students that, yeah, where you are now in your education, in your life. Yeah, it's good, it has pluses, but maybe there's a better place if you go seeking, if you work hard, you can find better things. It also teaches about the empires of the world because you play either as the Americans or the English or the Germans or the Mongols or the Romans or the ancient Greeks or the Spanish. And each of those empires has a different outlook and different advantages. For instance, if you're the Spanish, you get more money for exploring. And that reflects the Spanish empire. So it gives the students an interest in the Spanish empire. The English get an advantage with their naval combat. And yeah, that reflects the English. The Americans, three times the production from their factories because that's their contribution to the Second World War. They contributed a quarter of the worthwhile tanks, uh, not the tankettes, the worthwhile tanks to the Russian army. They contributed using their factories more boots to the Russian army than the Russian army had feet. 
because, yes, their army went up and down and went to a maximum, and that maximum is actually less than the amount of boots that the Americans shipped over via the convoys through the snow to Archangel. Now, yeah, there's history in each part of this. The Romans, they make wonders really fast in this game. And so all the aspects of the game will give the students interests in those nation states from the past and some today. The Russians are there with their advantages. And there are towns and cities that now cause trouble because the Russian Empire has Kiev as part of their nation. And yeah, that's having an effect on modern day news. History is changing. Kiev was where the Rush started. The Kievian Rush, Rus, then expanded into the Moscow area. It was only later that Moscow became the biggest city. And yeah, right now, 2023, they're at war. That happens. But it's important to know the background. It's important to get students interested in it. All media from the past, novels, yes, they were told to be the devil's books because they were about just reading. There was no information in there. Previously, books had been either religious or about science, uh, good science and bad science. And people bought them as something to read and to learn. And then books became so cheap with printing. Thank you, Mr. Claxton. Um, and the Chinese, of course. And they became so cheap that you could just put stories in them. So yes, at one point, the older generation didn't like novels. They didn't like Jane Eyre and things that are now part of the national curriculum. Television was ripped into when it was first invented, as was radio, as were computer games. All of these things the older generation didn't like. Partly because it wasn't their thing. They didn't understand it. And this was wrong. Years later, when the older generation has passed away and the generation that grew up with radio, the generation that grew up with novels, realize their use and I'm now saying don't try and stop mobile games encourage them in the right way encourage CIFREV2 not sponsored for this YouTube of course certainly this small little YouTube channel I've got but so good I'd like my parents to encourage students to play in the morning and if they play in the evening then yes then that's a, a phone away but playing in the morning, that's to be encouraged. So the students are awake. So the students do get to play their games. You can't just say, don't do it. But you can develop something into usefulness. Another one that Sifrev 2 teaches you is about science. The history of science. How one thing led to another, led to another. Something had to be discovered before the next thing could be discovered before the next thing. Technology trees are very much a big thing as strategy games. Map games. Sifrev 2. It's on a mobile phone. You do have to buy it though. It's not a instant download. It's something, it was 95 Hong Kong dollars when I bought it a few years ago, which is nine pounds. But a good investment for the education of students. Two other things I wanted to mention, it teaches you about geography, how mines are in mountains, and how plains will be where you get food from. Um, and some places, the sea is a great place to find food as well. And so hopefully, they'll be voting against governments that are encouraging overfishing, and for governments that are encouraging getting rid of the pollution that's in our seas at the moment. And also, uh, prioritising, yeah, you'd like to get all of the technologies working, all at once. But you have to prioritise which things you're going to push in which direction.
from science and technology in this game. Uh, patience, working hard, learning, failing, not being able to achieve a particular goal, having to start all over again, picking yourself up, starting again. That's a lesson learned, a life lesson that's learned by playing my mobile game. My favorite one at the moment. Oh, and if parents say, well, yeah, I put in nine pounds or nine US dollars, am I gonna have to buy another one the week after? Well, I've been playing this game for hundreds of hours on my way to school each day. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of hours. Three years now. <laughs>